Who saw the, um, the, the mist this morning? And um, who, who, who did something to get rid of the mist? Which one of you was it? Come on. Who, who was sitting there thinking, what do I need to do to get rid of the mist? <laughs> it's always one. <laughs> and then, um, did, did anybody have a thought at any point this morning? <laughs> yeah, good, okay. And um, did you do anything then to get rid of that thought? And did you spend time thinking about what you had to do to get rid of that thought or change it? And then... Um, is how, how's the mist now? It's not so much mist now, is there? So, um, and the reason I'm talking about this is not because I'm English and I like talking about the weather. <laughs> it's because this is just a perfect metaphor, actually, for the nature of our experience. So all thoughts, emotions and sensations, so we can just simply term data, um, evaporate um, and self-release naturally like a mist in the in the sunlight, in the bright sunlight. And so the data streams are the dynamic display of the bright sunshine of open intelligence. And open intelligence is what's looking through your eyes. It's the basis of your experience. And if you just stop thinking for a moment and you notice what remains, there's alertness, cognizance, the capacity to know, this is open intelligence or awareness. And we have a really simple choice about how we use our intelligence or our awareness in each moment. We can spend our time and our energy and our attention trying to work out what we do to manipulate our experience. To try and um, manage our experience, to try and make it look the way that somehow we think it should look. Or we can just rest naturally in this basic state of complete perceptual openness. And like the mist evaporating as the sun rises, in the same way we see that actually all of, our, all of our experience just self-releases without us needing to do anything about it. And to really see that this is the case with all of our experience is the training up process. Because we've learned that there are certain thoughts, emotions and experiences that we really do need to do something about. And um, it's interesting to just see what these are and how much we've taken on board these ideas that we really need to do something about them. Um, so sexual desire would be a great example. You know, when that, that, that rush of energy that you feel and then you've learned to label it as sexual desire and, and well, what, what do I do about it? You know, because I, you know, I need to do something about it. You know, what do I do about it? You know, do I try and su suppress it and you know, not, not show it or you know, ignore it or push it away? Or, or do I immediately try and run after it and work out who can you know, help me with this sexual desire? Or you know, who's the, uh, the target of my sexual desire? <laughs> or, but you know, it, it, it's, it's so, um, so lively. There's so much dynamic energy there that I've got to do something about it. And so it's really fascinating to then approach all experience from this same recognition that in that moment too we have the same choice. We can put our focus and our time and our energy into trying to do something with what we're experiencing, so it could be sexual desire, or we can rest the mind naturally and recognize that the sexual desire is simply the dynamic expression, the liveliness the beneficial potency of the basic state of mind. It arises spontaneously and it self-releases naturally like the mist in the air. And when we recognize this directly with things that we have taken to have an independent nature, then we're tapping into the real freedom and the real ease of being that is the basis of all experience. And the training is required because there are some things that just seem so demanding of attention. 
And it's interesting, sexual desire, is that a positive thing or a negative thing? Not quite sure myself there. But there are some things that are like, they're just, they're just negative, aren't they? Like, like routine or boredom or not feeling enthusiastic. You know, surely those are things that we shouldn't feel. You know, they're kind of, they're not so extreme, but you know, shouldn't feel bored really. But then to take boredom as well, to take the lack of enthusiasm, to take our ideas about not liking routine, and to take these into our practice of allowing everything to be as it is. This is where we discover the liveliness in boredom. We discover the energy in not liking routine we discover the potency and the bright shine of mind as the basis of all of our descriptions about what's going on. And from there we can rest naturally and allow the descriptions to be as they are. And what opens up is a clear seeing. And that clear seeing means that we're no longer mastered by the data. So for example, with the sexual desire, I see I have a choice about how I act on it, if I act on it. And that choice from allowing it to be as it is, is from a place of relaxed openness, not from a place of um, knee-jerk reaction to that particular thought, emotion or experience. And this applies to all data. And the same thing with boredom. Um, that was something I wanted to eradicate from my life. So as soon as I felt that little clutch of boredom dragging me down and it was almost like I was being suffocated, I couldn't breathe, I'm bored, I don't like routine, it's, what do I do about it? To use that direct encounter with that data stream as your opportunity to allow it to be as it is and to recognize open intelligence as the basis of the boredom. Inseparable from the boredom is the bright shine of mind that is never bored that is always clear, always alight, always alight, always bright, just seeing everything as it is, and then resting as that, inseparable from the boredom. And then there are some things that we really don't like. Ah, what about, um, does anyone, this is kind of a question and answer session here, it's good to ask some questions for a change. Does anyone um, enjoy self-loathing? Enjoy a bit of self-loathing? I mean, we can indulge it a bit, can't we? We can go in there. Or what about self-criticism? Is that a good thing, generally? I hate it. But it's with me every day. Like self-loathing, like really thinking you're, ah, you're just like a really bad person and nobody likes you and nobody will love you. Ah, has anyone had that thought? Possibly, yeah. Nobody will ever love me. It's like, it's so sad. And, and so like with those thoughts, and suddenly we have that thought, and then we can come up with all of the reasons why we're justified in having that thought. And it's so painful, and it seems so real. And so to discover that we have a choice in how we use our mind. So when that thought comes up, oh, nobody will love me. And I begin to go with the stories about it. Quite often now I'm able to relax and to take a short moment and to recognize that that thought is also just a bright shine of mind. It's a data streaming through open intelligence. And in that I'm recognizing open intelligence in the thought of self-loathing, in, in the thought of self-criticism. Not waiting for the thought to go so that I can rest naturally and recognize the basis of everything, the nature of mind, open intelligence, but recognizing it in the negative data. And this is absolutely key. This is the real empowerment to see that we can face everything as it is. And when we do, we discover this complete freedom in self-loathing, in self-criticism, in all of the negativity. That's where we'll find our freedom but only by allowing it to be as it is and recognizing it as open intelligence. And the practice of short moments is really helpful because some of these data have seemed so real for so long. We've emphasized the stories about them for so long. But just to take an instant of stopping that description and having a moment of the instinctive recognition of open intelligence inseparable from that negative thought. 
just an instant. We're not trying to prolong the recognition. We're touching in with the ground of being in the direct encounter with the negativity, in the direct encounter with the sexual desire, in the direct encounter with the boredom or the, the lack of enthusiasm. And in this way we're seeing for ourselves the equal and even nature of all data. All data descriptions arise spontaneously and self-release naturally, none of them leaving a trace in the pristine openness of mind, like the flight path of the bird in the sky leaves no trace in the sky. We can't have that as an intellectual idea because it really doesn't help. It has to be an instinctive recognition. So these short moments are really helpful. It's like a short blast of reality. A short blast of recognizing what is actually going on. What is at the basis of my negative description? What is it that knows my negative description? What is it that is ex experiencing my negative description? And then the negative description may come back. And so then we have the rest of the support. Because otherwise it seems like they can take us down. You know, really take us down. Because we've been telling the story for so long. It really seems to be who we are. You know, we're these flawed beings with all of these personality traits that we need to do something about again. And so to come to a community where everybody else is relying on open intelligence and using the support to allow themselves to be as they are is really supportive. Because by seeing that it's possible for other people, we see it's possible for us. To be exposed to a training and training media that only confirms the actual nature of reality as bright shining open intelligence inseparable from all of its dynamic display and nothing else Nothing coming between that recognition, nothing in the way. All of the data, the opportunity for that recognition and confirming that in a completely unerring way without mixing it up in with anything else. No preliminary practice, the direct recognition of the nature of mind again and again and again. Short moments repeated many times until that instinctive recognition is obvious all of the time. And then we have a trainer like somebody who we can actually ask questions about our experience and who will give answers based on their experience. Not based on a philosophy or an idea, but basing the answers on their experience of relying on open intelligence in their life. So this is advice that can be really helpful because it's not theoretical, it's practical, it's experiential. This is tapping into the sublime wisdom that we all have access to and seeing that we have access to this too. We see this in the trainer and we recognize it in ourselves. So there's this incredible support system and it's available wherever you go. It's up to you to decide how you use it. It's so much available online, local communities, start your own local community. This complete empowerment in the nature of reality and our capacity to empower ourselves with that. But this is what we're tapping into here. And the nature of reality is sublime wisdom that allows us to know what to do and what to say that will be of benefit to all. But this is the purpose of this training. It's not awareness for awareness's sake. It's awareness training so that we can be of great benefit. And it may start in very small and personal ways and that is perfect. We have to see it in these small and personal ways first to know whether it works. But what we're opening up to is the great reality. This great reality of um, the pure mandala of complete benefit, with everything included, particularly the negative data. These are the ones where there's the most power. Allowing the negative data to be as they are, outshining them, seeing that they do not have an independent nature no matter how long the story has been running. And in that comes the ease and the power and the capacity that we were looking for in thinking that we had to get rid of them or manage them. It's in allowing them to be as they are. They are already the great shine of open intelligence. And so like the mist in the air, there is nothing that we need to do with our experience. And we're simply learning to relax and allow everything to be as it is. So it's so simple and yet so profound and so powerful. And everything is on offer here for you to take it as far as you want to take it.